Are you trying to lose weight or are you trying to lose fat? Hi, welcome to Keto with JT. I'm a certified keto and intermittent fasting coach. And today I wanna share with you 10 ways you can measure progress on keto. We're gonna break those down into two different categories. One category is the am I actually in ketosis category. And the other category is going to be am I actually making progress with keto category, okay? And the first two fall into the am I actually in ketosis category. So the first one I wanna talk about is pee strips. Right now, I normally am not a big fan of pee strips because they can be a source of frustration if you don't understand what's going on when you first start keto. And I will say they can be useful under the right circumstances and that's what we're gonna talk about. When you start following a ketogenic diet, what'll happen is your body will start producing ketones, but your body won't actually be using those ketones right away. And so most of them get peed out uh, in your urine. Right, and so when you're measuring with the pee strips, what happens is you're gonna show very high levels or high levels of ketones, and you're gonna be like, yay, it's working, and that's good. But what'll happen over the next couple of weeks or so, uh, you'll measure and you'll see that those uh, that it's registering a little bit lower or a lot lower than it was before. If you don't know what's going on, you could get frustrated. Oh, what, what's going on? It was working before, why is it not working now? What's happening is your body is starting to adapt and it is adapting to using those ketones. It's using the ketones so less of those ketones are being eliminated out in the urine. So the the P strips are not going to be accurate, but they can be useful in the very beginning of knowing am I actually, is it, am I actually doing this right? Am I actually in ketosis? And that's what I would limit those to. Now the second one is another way of measuring your ketone levels and it is much more accurate and that is using a blood or a ketone blood meter. They're very available, they're very affordable. You can find them from like the, the high 20s to the low 100s, somewhere in that range. And you're going to use that to actually measure the blood. What you want to do is take readings at different times of the day throughout the week and you put those readings together to give you an average. 0.5 to 1.5 millimoles per liter is a measurement that shows that you're in light nutritional ketosis. The optimal range would be about 1.5 to 3.0 millimoles per liter. That's kind of where you want to want to be on average. So if you want to use a ketone blood meter, that's if you want to measure your ketones, that's what I would recommend that you use. Okay, so now we're going to go on to a couple of others and the next seven fall in the am I getting results with keto category. And the first one is the scale. This is the one that everyone thinks about and this is the one that most people focus on and think this is the only way to measure results. But there are some challenges. Have you ever noticed that you can develop a love-hate relationship with a scale? It can be the source of great celebration, but it can also be the source of oh, miserable frustration. There's some things that we should be aware of when we're using the scale. One, the average adult's body weight will fluctuate somewhere between two and six pounds every single day. What goes into that is you're eating, you're going to the restroom, the hydration levels in your body are fluctuating throughout the day, and that's what's uh, causing this weight fluctuation. Now, can you imagine if you're weighing yourself every day, but at different times of the day, how that could cause some real frustration when you're seeing, oh, one day you're down two pounds. Yay, I lost two pounds. Another day you're up six pounds. You're like, wait a second, how did I gain six pounds? It's, you know, what's going on? And so that could, that's where using the scale can be really frustrating. So here's what I recommend. One, step on the scale only once per week on the same day at the exact same time of that day. For example, Friday morning, right when you wake up, you go and you step on the scale, and every Friday at that time, you weigh yourself. The reason we're doing that is we want the conditions to be similar, as similar, as identical as we possibly can every time we step on the scale. We also want to give ourselves some time to actually make progress in our weight loss journey. In reference to the scale, we also need to set our expectations appropriately for what kind of results we should be getting. And what you should expect, a healthy progression of weight loss is about 0.5 to two pounds per week. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but that adds up. Let's say it's one pound per week. One week you've lost one pound, mm, that's not very exciting. The second week, 
wow, the third week, fourth week, next thing you know, one month I've lost four pounds, two months, eight pounds, three months, 12 pounds. Now it really starts to make a difference. Just keep in mind, if you set your expectations appropriately, and every time you step on the scale, even if you get a half a pound down, you're gonna be in good shape, and that will add up over time. The other thing I want to talk about with the scale is that we have to understand that in the beginning we're going to lose significant amount of weight right away so in the first week or two maybe three weeks you're going to lose somewhere between 5 10 maybe even 15 pounds what you have to understand is that's mostly water weight when we're eating a high carb diet we tend to retain water when we lower those carbs for a period of time your body's going to let go of that water and you're going to look and see wow i'm losing a lot of weight just understand that that will level off to our 0.5 to 2 pounds per week on average over, over the long haul. With, with the topic of weight, we need to talk about, well, what kind of weight are we trying to lose, right? So if I ask you, are you trying to lose weight or are you trying to lose fat? <laughs> we don't want to say the word fat, right? But when we say, I want to lose some weight, very likely what we're actually saying is, I want to lose fat. The reason I bring this up is because the, not too long ago, uh, one of my clients asked me, hey, you know, my wife's been doing this and, and she uh, stepped on the scale and one day she actually gained weight. And then there's some things that play into that, right? All those things we just talked about. But there's something else that can go into this. If you're doing keto, especially if you're doing intermittent fasting along with that, you can activate human growth hormone which will cause you to gain some muscle. We determined in her case, she had actually gained some muscle, but she was still losing fat, all right? And that's why we talk about the, the topic of body composition. Let me try to illustrate this for you. Here's a guy that weighs 200 pounds. Here's another version of this guy that weighs 200 pounds. They both weigh exactly the same, but they have a different body composition. Muscle weighs more than fat. So you can gain muscle and lose fat. You're gonna look better, but you might weigh exactly the same. The scale may not be accurate for those reasons. So the other thing we wanna look at is this next one, and that is how, did you, how do your clothes fit? This is very common, and this happens frequently where the scale doesn't show any results. I've not, haven't lost any weight, but for some reason, I've lost an inch around my waist. What's happening is your body composition is changing. You are losing fat, but you're gaining a little bit of muscle. That's why we can't rely so only on the scale. We wanna use some of these other data points to help us get a bigger, uh, more clear picture of what's going on. The next one is very similar to that, and that is actually measuring, taking a tape measure, one of those like, uh, you know, sewing tape measures and actually measure, and you're gonna measure around your midsection right at the belly button. And you could be in a situation where the, the scale is still reading the same weight, but your waist is shrinking. Okay, so you wanna pay attention to that. That's a great data point. That's, that is telling you very clearly that what you're doing is working. Now don't worry, what'll happen over time is the weight will go down. But just don't get too focused on what the scale says. The next thing is, and this is really fun, look in the mirror. How do you look in the mirror? Regardless of what the scale says, if your clothes are looser and the measuring, you're, you're measuring your, your midsection and that's shrinking, you're gonna look a lot better in the mirror. One of the other things you might notice is your skin will start to glow a little bit. It'll tighten up a little bit and you can tell, hey, you know what? I'm starting to look a little younger. And what'll happen is people are saying, hey, what are you doing? You look like you may have lost some weight. What are you doing? And that's, that's a pretty awesome one. We'll, we'll put, throw that in with, you know, the mirror. How do, how, what's my appearance like? The next one is, how do I feel? What you might start noticing is that in the afternoon, you're not as sluggish and lethargic as you used to be. Right around that three o'clock time frame, right? When you, you feel like you got hit by a truck and all of a sudden you don't feel that way anymore. You have a little more energy, you're a little bit more, your, your brain, your thought process, your mind is a little bit sharper. That is another indicator that, hey, things are going well. Now in the beginning, you might have a headache. In the beginning, it might not be like that, and there's reasons for that. It's typically what we refer to as a keto flu. It's because you've uh, lost some electrolytes. Replace those electrolytes and you will feel better. The next one is, how are you sleeping? In the beginning, again, it may be kind of strange because when your body starts producing ketones and your body starts using ketones, you may wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, wow, um, hmm, I'm just not uh, tired right now. <laughs> that will go away and over time, 
you will notice that you can sleep a lot deeper, you sleep through the night a lot better, more comfortably. And there's another indication that you're getting results on keto. The next one is, and kind of related to how do you feel, your mind getting sharper, your memory may improve just a little bit, you may be able to think a lot faster, a lot more clearly. And there's another indicator that this, what you're doing is having an effect, you are getting good results. So we've talked about, am I getting results category? Those aren't the only ones, but those are some main ones and those are some good ones that you can follow. The so next I wanna go back to the am I in ketosis category. And I wanna share with you the what I consider to be the very best one and one of the most satisfying, one of the best, most natural indicators to tell you, hey, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in ketosis. I am, uh, I am becoming fat adapted. I'm becoming keto adapted. And that is hunger. This is one of the very best indicators that what you're doing is working, that keto is working. If you notice your hunger levels coming down and being more mild, more level, more consistent throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, and when you find that you will never describe your hunger again as being starving, you'll never describe yourself as being hangry, you just won't feel that way. You won't feel these massive increases in hunger. You won't wake up in the morning just feeling like, oh man, I gotta hurry up and eat something because my stomach hurts. That actually used to happen to me back in the day when I was into bodybuilding and I was trying to eat 4,000 calories a day. I'd wake up with a stomach ache and feel like, oh, just I had such hunger pains, I had to eat something right away. With keto, that does not happen. You'll wake up and you won't even be hungry and you'll go throughout the day and be like, hey, what? What am I missing? And then you'll start to feel a little bit hungry. It's like, I'm hungry, I wonder why. Oh, I haven't had breakfast yet. That is awesome. It's one of the most satisfying and the easiest, most natural ways to tell whether or not you are in ketosis and your ketogenic lifestyle is absolutely working. I hope this video has been helpful. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you next time.